Question 25. Some anthropologists argue that the human species could not have survived prehistoric times if the species had not evolved the ability to cope with diverse natural environments. However, there is considerable evidence that Australopithecus afarensis, a prehistoric species related to early humans, also thrived in a diverse area of environments, but became extinct. Hence, the anthropologist's claim is false. So, argument or facts, clearly we have an argument, hence would be our structural indicator, the conclusion being the anthropologist's claim is false. And what was this anthropologist's claim? And you notice the first sentence tells us some anthropologists argue that human species could not have survived prehistoric times if the species had not evolved the ability to cope with the diverse natural environments. We know if introduces sufficient, so not evolve the ability to cope with diverse natural environments, then the necessary condition would be could not have survived prehistoric times, so survived prehistoric times negated. The contrapositive would tell us that to survive prehistoric times, they must evolve the ability to cope with diverse natural environments. So that is the anthropologist's claim. You notice it is a general principle. And then the author gives us a premise that he believes disproves this general principle. And that is the example of Australopithecus afarensis, a prehistoric species related to early humans that also thrived in a diverse array of environments but became extinct. So basically, Australopithecus afarensis had the ability to survive in diverse array of environments, so evolved the ability to cope in a diverse array of environments, and also tells us that they became extinct, so they did not survive prehistoric times. And takes that to conclude, therefore, the anthropologist's claims is false. So let's take a closer look. The anthropologist's claim here is a sufficient and necessary statement. How do we disprove a sufficient and necessary statement? Well, imagine I told you that all berries are red. How would you prove me wrong? You would show me a blue berry, maybe a boysenberry, right? And the idea there is you would be showing me a berry that is not red. So to disprove a sufficient and necessary statement, you want to show sufficient can exist without necessary. So in order for this author to correctly disprove this anthropologist's statement, he would have to show either a creature that survived prehistoric times, but that did not evolve the ability to cope with diverse natural environments, or a creature that did not evolve the ability to cope with diverse natural environments, but survived prehistoric times. And you notice the example of the Australopithecus afarensis shows us neither of those. Instead, you see a species that has evolved the capacity to deal with a diverse array of natural environments, but that did not survive prehistoric times. And you notice, based on the principle, having the capacity or have, having evolved the ability to cope with a diverse array of natural environments is our necessary condition. It tells us nothing about whether this species has survived or not survived prehistoric times. We cannot go backwards. Don't just reverse so you notice here, the author is assuming that the general principle is the reverse. That if we have evolved the ability to cope with diverse natural environments, then 
we survive prehistoric times. Because the example of Australopithecus alfarensis shows us evolved the ability to cope with diverse natural environments but did not survive prehistoric times and that would be correct then because we would be showing sufficient without necessary but again it's not correct because that is not what the anthropologists are claiming they're claiming the reverse of that so clearly we have a flawed argument and now that we have a clear understanding of this mistake, again, the author is reversing or mistaking sufficient for necessary. So the reasoning in the argument is most vulnerable to criticism on the grounds that the argument most vulnerable to criticism, we have an errors of reasoning question. So we've identified the error, don't just negate or mistaking sufficient for necessary. So let's go find the answer choice that explains that flaw. A, confuses a condition being required for a given result to occur in one case with a condition being sufficient for such a result to occur in a similar case. And you notice confusing what is required for what is sufficient, mistaking sufficient for necessary, which is exactly what we saw in the passage. So A would be the correct answer. Again, because to disprove sufficient and necessary, you must show sufficient without necessary. In this case, the author showed us necessary without sufficient, and that is not correct. We know nothing about sufficient based on whether or not necessary is present. So the author was clearly reversing this statement, assuming that it said the reverse, because then his evidence would have shown sufficient without necessary and would have disproved the anthropologist's claim if this was their claim, but it's not. So again, you notice the mistake here is that they are reversing sufficient and necessary conditions, so A would be the correct answer. But again, let's just make sure. B takes for granted that if one species had a characteristic that happened to enable it to survive certain conditions, at least one related ex extinct species must have had the same characteristic. And you notice that's clearly not what is happening in this passage. That is not the assumption. It is not taking that for granted. So B would be out. C generalizes from the fact that one species with a certain characteristic survives certain conditions, that all related species with same characteristic must have survived exactly the same conditions. And actually, the author's not doing that at all. Because they showed us a related species, Australopithecus afarensis, that did not survive prehistoric times. So C clearly does not apply, and C would be eliminated. D fails to consider the possibility that Australopithecus afarensis had one or more characteristics that lessen its chances of surviving prehistoric times. And that is clearly not what's going on. That's true, but it's not the flaw the problem here is that the anthropologist's general principle is not refuted by the author's evidence because the author's evidence would only refute the reverse of the anthropologist's claim. So that's the problem. D, you could argue that it's true. He does do that, but that's not the logical flaw. So do not pick it as the correct answer. Moving to E, fails to consider the possibility that even if a condition caused the result to occur in one case, it was not necessary to cause the result to occur in a similar case. And again, clearly out, this is not a cause and effect argument. So how could E be the correct answer?